we're going to have for during the first half hour or so we're going to have a, a bit of talk I'm going to, going to try and explain some ideas about design and science DJs and uh, JD is going to help me uh, I, I haven't really explained much to him so far but we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how much sense I can make as, as that time goes on um, so first, first of all there is, there is some music and it's the Beach Boys Why God Made the Radio <laughs> Well, JD has joined me. Good morning, JD. Good morning, sir. Thank you for last week. I, I did hear it online in Lancaster. Did you really? Yeah. Did you get it up there? Oh, yeah, the, the internet goes everywhere. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, and I, th- I think that worked well. We, um, the idea of taking, taking somebody else's work and <laughs> use, using it to broadcast for half an hour. I think that's very easy broadcasting, really. I'm not sure about your... your mu- let. Will you just say, say something else, JD? Hello. No, yes. that's... Try again. Yep. Hello? Yes? Yes, that's it. You're, okay, that's it. That, no, no your, mic, your mic's up there. Yeah. So the, 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 first, the first idea I wanted to, to look at is um, the, the idea of the science DJ. Okay. Because we, we found this on, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And um, Anybody listening can, can find it as well. If you if you just search on YouTube for the the rise of the science DJ, you'll you'll find it there. Okay. And Where do you want to start? Well, did you have a look? Did it make much sense when you ha- when you when you looked at first? Uh, uh, number one, yes, I had a look. Yes. And number two, it didn't make any sense at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, still, <laughs> I'm trying to get the concept to see if where you're coming from for this because right. it's rather technical for my liking. Well, it um, it's technical in that it's using YouTube, but YouTube isn't necessarily that complicated. Um, the, if, if you can load up a video or if you can link to a video, mm-hmm. uh, you can make you can take advantage of what YouTube offers. Right. And uh, it's getting easier to edit stuff. If if people go for Creative Commons and allow the remix to be possible. Uh, right. So you're coming from a concept of putting a show together. Is this the science, is it? This is what I well, this is Yeah, this is where the science could come in. This is where, where it could be relevant. I've but never thought of it as science. You haven't thought of putting no, a show I, together as science? No, I think it's a skill. Ah. Oh. An extended skill of ours, which some people have got and some people haven't. So it's, it's like riding a bicycle. So you see it as, as a skill? Yep. Yeah. So, what about design? Would would design come into it? Do you do you start a show with an idea of what's going to happen? No, you don't I do have that. No design whatsoever. No, and uh, it just comes off the top of my head. Ah, oh. so that's the creativity of it. Yes, I with, with my own show, which uh, people do know that I have one on another station. Um, I do actually start with something, which I've already created. Well, that's just because of the time factor of what I've got in between one person and the next. So I have something lined up, ready to go. OK. So I've got the start of a show. So that's I've created the start, and I've created the end. Right. And what comes in between is anybody's guess. OK. But you, you, I mean, we, we know, but the, the listeners should, should, should know, well, it's, it's actually on Tottenham FM. I don't think we okay. need, need <laughs> mind mentioning okay. that. Um, but it's an 80s show. Yes. So you've set up a, a scope for the show, which yes. is that all the music is from the 1980s. Well, it would be called the 80s show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be playing 90s music. No. So there's, there's an intention of it yep. for, for the show. Yep. So there's a design to that extent. Yes. As a concept to the show, it's like you having um, the wild show as anything goes. Yes. Right, and it normally does. Yes. <laughs> and um, well, this is a concept show. It's like, it's like uh, the chat before us. He's a storyteller, so he's telling stories. Right. So each show has its own concept. Right. But um, some shows, like the wild show, where anything goes. Yeah. It's probably much better, really. I think. Yeah, but there's still some sort of. Well, we have a meeting after after the sh- after the wild show, don't we? I mean, maybe we do our planning in the wrong order, but we have a coffee mm. after the after the show. But the coffee shop's not open before, so well, no, <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> Let's go and find somewhere else. But 
um, one of the one of the concepts that come, is coming along is is design science, mm -hmm. which I think I, I'd like to know more about. Mm -hmm. And I think it is is trying to use a scientific method in design. So and this would only work if you if you can identify where the, where the design is. Yes, that's that's what I'm trying to still and working on is is where you've placed this thing called or you've heard about this thing called design. Uh, to a concept of of a radio show. Well, do you do um, do you change your approach to the show at all based on on how you experience a particular show or what sort of feedback you get? Um, feedback, none. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do get feedback here, yeah. so I get some very good comments about my show, and I like those. But um, I think it's a um, it's a it's actually you, I creativity has actually come along to do it. I think it comes flows from you much better yeah. than if you come in with a playlist of ten songs and say oh, oh, that's what yes. I'm going to play in yes. between them. Yes. No, I'm not saying the design is, is got has got to be like that. Mm. All I'm all I'm saying is that I think there is some um, there's some sort of process whereby you have an idea about the show before the show, and you do some sort of check after the show as to whether it worked or not. Yes, I always listen to myself and slap myself on the wrist if it's not quite right or it sounds horrible, you know, and do it and not do it again. So that is the probably the design thing is an after design, not a before design. Yeah, but it's in time for the next one. Yeah. Probably. Probably. It probably won't be the next one. It'll probably be the next one after that or the next one after that. So it will come along again. Right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> now... Um, I think what I'm going to do is play some more music while, yeah. while I, while I um, sort out the uh, sort out the the, the next um, extract because I'm I, I'm kind of I'm going to I, I realise we, we our listeners are probably expecting some music from a from a radio show so <laughs> endless talk about design theory is not not what they're um, expecting. So um, this 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 one is Melissa Everidge, uh, and I'll I'll explain why when when I've got it to play. Ready and three, two, one. Cameras are set. Let's roll playback. So I, I, I was interested in Melissa Everidge because that's one of the artists that uh, Josh Stone mentions as having heard uh, some time ago, and uh, that's a, that's a recent track that's 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 been out. Um, JD, you get, you prepared to talk about one of the shows that the listeners might have heard, maybe last week's, yes, and how how it came about. Yes, but for me, it's um, you throw so something into the pool, yes, and then uh, I look at it. And a concept of I had to break it down because it was a just to explain, a long, again, it's, it's explain a, again what it was for people. Yes, it was a long, week. long two-hour program, no, no, our pro program, uh, which was all about autism. It's about the positively autistic show, which is a really good show, but they're having a, bit, a few technical di difficulties, which I'd like to go and talk to them about. But uh, you threw that at me, and I had to catch it, and then I had to edit it down in order to, to actually make a half-hour bit. And I've never heard of it myself, but I'm, I'm prepared to pay anything. And then afterwards, um, to fill in the time, I already pre-done I pre do, done exactly what you're doing right now. You've got the next sort of music already lined up, with what you would like to play, but not necessarily in the order I've got them on the CD. Right. So it goes with a sort of like a flavour of... Um, so I've had a, sort of a, an outline of the programme from you uh, or from whoever wants a request or something like that and that's what you tailor make it to so um, that was uh, that programme which we did and last last week we had to tailor made it to, to get the fit the requests in and so that's 
that changes your outlook of say, well, I'm going to play you that track, that track, and that track. If somebody's requested a song, uh, that throws the whole thing around. So you've you prepared for requests to come in? Yes. Absolutely. So there's, there is... Emails. Yeah. Donkeys, cows, <laughs> pigs, anything to the studio, I don't mind. I'm prepared for it. Right. Yeah. So I think... Just going back to the, what was being what's being said in the YouTube video about the, the it's called the rise of the science DJ mm -hmm. is that uh, pre presenting stuff about science uh, lectures school mm. lessons uh, home education whatever it is is getting easier because uh, video is now making material available in a similar way to recorded music when DJs started right. So you, w we can rely on pre-recorded elements of this yeah. show yes. that we know are, are to a very high level of, of quality yes. and that people are interested in. In other words, you don't get the scratch version on the, on the RPM <laughs> 33 and a third or 45 <laughs> records, do you? So, well, No, but the, the DJ, the concept of the DJ does go back to very crackly records. I mean, radio in the 20s. I, I do know. I've done a <laughs> 1940s programme, so I know all about <laughs> crackles and what have you. And the more crackles, the better, really. <laughs> Gives that ambiance, you know, of that era. But uh, that's what it is. So today, you see, it's high technology, so everything has to be clean, clean cut and everything. Yes. So it's presentable. Yes. Whereas... 1940s, you could play a scratch version, and it's part of the era. Yeah. So, so the the, the radio DJs re reached a, a, you know, in most cases, quite mm. an advanced level. Yes. And what, I think what's being claimed in that in that video is that the, the the science DJ is 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 as it were a sort of YouTube DJ mm -hmm. or an online DJ. Yes. And um, it's it's a it's the, it's a process of taking different existing elements and creating something specific for a particular situation. Yes, you play you play the music and the times to the era where you are. So, like for instance, if you do an eighties program, you don't you wouldn't you wouldn't have high tech stuff in that at all. So, but you hear more now of of should we say the um, songs of yesteryear? Yeah. And I've turned on a certain radio station on the way up today, and it's nothing but old stuff, you know. And so the old stuff is still here, and it hasn't died away, but it's been regenerated into okay. a different form. Yeah. In in whether it's uh, the longer version, or whatever, right. you know, it's it's made to fit this particular era now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we can come we come back to that. I think just how how music is redesigned and, and reused. Yep. But um, and different approaches to design. I'd like to come on to later, but it depends how much time time we have. Mm -hmm. Chris Chris may be may be late, but he may turn up in in the next twenty minutes or so, and um, I think he he prefers to go back to more music. So I'm just going to start by playing one, one extract from. Um, a podcast from Asian Creative Transformations, and this is uh, Jason Potts uh, describing uh, how he sees uh, creative industries and uh, creative uh, policy in in China. It's it's based on on a book, how creativity is changing China, and uh, if you if you search on Asian Creative Transformations. Or there will be a, a link on on the World Show Facebook page l later on. Um, the advertising industry would not exist. Um, you, you run through this this list of sets of things that are in the creative industries, and then you go back and you look at what China used to look like, basically pre 1978, and that was exactly the case. There was no advertising industry there. You didn't need one. There was no fashion industry. Why would you have such a thing? None of those parts of the creative industries existed, precisely because they only matter in an evolving economy, which is different from a growing economy. A growing economy is the same, but bigger and bigger and bigger as you add more capital and more factories and just increase the capital intensity of an economy. But you never have to do anything different. 
You can think the same way, have the same jobs. The firms just get bigger and bigger and bigger, but they're not different firms. There's no marketing taking place. There's no consumers learning about new products. There's no people having to change the way they are, the way they, they, they function. Um, there's no new business models. There's no... There's, there's no destruction either. There's, there's no people leaving from one place and moving to another place and reinventing their lives. There's no sense of the next generation doing something completely different to the previous generation. There is no change in what people are, how they behave. Um, creative industries do that. That's, that's their, their function um, in, in the sense. And the faster an economy is developing and evolving i.e. changing from within with new industries, new ways of being, new jobs, new, new, anything you can think of, new ways of looking at the world. That's when creative industries matter. And a static economy, or even one that's, that's growing but, but not changing from within, no role for creative industries. Um, and one that is transforming from within, fundamental role for creative industries. Now, another point that's, that's often, I mean, um, that I'll sort of mention, I mean, what that does is, is that... Um, Evolutionary economists have a, have a way of looking at, have a way of describing this process of economic growth and change in terms of um, a trajectory that uh, um, that begins with first there is a novel idea, um, phase one, then there is the adoption of that new idea into um, into markets, industries, and so on. That's the diffusion process. That's phase two, and then there's the retention of that novel idea. It forms new habits, new routines, and essentially beds down. Uh, that, that three-phase trajectory is the innovation process. Creative industries play a role in every single one of those phases. Um, not just the initial creativity, but the process of adoption, of people learning new ideas, of the diffusion of ideas. Um, they play a role in the normalization and retention and embedding of those ideas. Um, all of those three phases of an innovation trajectory have creative industries playing a role. Now, when you see it that way, it's obvious that they're not understood as just an industry that's over here that's either growing or not growing, right? Um, as it were, the brick-making industry or something. They touch everything, um, but only when things are changing from within. So this is the sense in which we've been arguing here, um, that's what I'm reading in this book as well, is that just creative industries is the wrong word. They're not industries. Um, they're part of a process of change. They're, they're close to, closer to part of the innovation system rather than, 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 than separate industries. Now, one way in which you notice how that actually works is if you look at just the difference between old culture and new culture um, often people who haven't really thought this through properly um, will look at countries like America or Britain and go why are they such cultural powerhouses as exporters they don't have culture how can they possibly export culture and then you compare other nations that have hundreds, thousands, millennia of, of culture and they're importing culture now, this is the sort of, why we have, we have such great culture, why can't we export it to the world? You're missing the point, if that's what you think. Um, the reason that America and Britain, countries nominally, nominally with barbarian culture from um, everyone else's perspective, the French um, especially seem to view it that way, but why is it that they are so powerful at exporting culture when they don't have any answer. They're not exporting old culture. They're exporting new culture, and they've got lots of that. They're continually reinventing themselves, their industries, their, their things, and that's what they're, they're exporting. Right? If China's going to become a great powerhouse of creative industries and cultural exporters, it can't focus on its past culture. It has to be telling the story of its reinvention right now. Um, you see that in a lot of Korean exports. You see that in the sort of mangoes, Japanese. If you look at the cultural exports, it's not a celebration of, of, of a glorious past. It's it's a dealing with a with a with a interesting present. Um, and, and as we proceed through that, right? I mean, that's, a, that's the sort of I think crucial difference between cultural and creative industries. Why they're not the same. Um, what the role of innovation is and why this book, I think, How Creativity is Changing China, um, gets, it, gets it absolutely correct. Um, this is the clearest statement I've ever read from a Chinese economist um, about this role of what, what creative industries actually are, what the role they play in the process of economic growth and development. And finally, when you see it that way, um, when you see that clearly, what becomes apparent is not that 
when nations are rich, then they can afford to have these luxuries of, of creative industries. That, that that's a rich nation thing. Um, no, creative industries are absolutely, fundamentally vital precisely at, at, for developing nations. Because what developing nations are going through is this dramatic, deep, fundamental process of reinventing the economy from the inside out, of reinventing labor markets, jobs, um, specializations, um, ways of looking at the world. They have to become different people, as it were. That's when you need creative industries the most. Um, when you're rich and mature and, and the nation isn't growing anymore and it becomes basically France, um, you don't need creative industries then. Why would you? You can just go back to let's just celebrate our past culture and we'll have some news channels and, and maybe some magazines for distraction. But you're not trying to reinvent things, therefore you don't need creative industries. It's no wonder that France isn't a major powerhouse exporter of culture, except where it does matter for France, which is in fashion and design. So... JD, I think I think we'll have to come back to that. Yes, that rather clip. complicated. But There's a lot in there. There's a lot in there, but yes, the general outline I think <laughs> is. A, is well, it, it's it's quite interesting mm. this distinction between cultural industries and creative industries, because I don't I don't know where music is then, because a lot of what we do in those terms is is like a creative thing. We're we're yeah. just sort of playing with I it, think promoting it, and I think, I think messing might, about with it. Yeah. I but think it's both, actually, yes. It's in the both categories. And so the DJ is somewhere, mm. somewhere in between. So the DJ is sometimes well, allowed to... Well, that's to what play. it is. He's, he's, he's a person who sits in between two records. Right. So he is. It's in between the two <laughs> creativities, you see, aren't they? And the, yeah, that's a good concept to think about, isn't it? And... The, the the other thing which struck me was this idea about barbarian places like uh, uh, the UK or, and uh, the United States were both, both mentioned. Or, well, I, th I think what's, what they're really meaning, and so I say we got, I think we've got to listen to it again. Yes, I think so. Yes, um, is that you can have a, you can have a cultural industry or creative industry uh, based on people who don't necessarily know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. Which sounds sounds like a radio presenter, really. You do. <laughs> <laughs> you, Don't you think you've got the job. <laughs> <laughs> that seems the uh, <laughs> seems that the basis of most uh, most studio approaches. Well, it's, as as you as you say, is the uh, the person who sits in between the two concepts of creativity, yep. whether it's music or it's what we've just heard there. Yeah. Then, uh, if you listen to earlier years, when you you got the proper announcer, you know, you used to like a real radio voice. Yes. You know, they say, and now this, you know, um, you can see that it's it's an over the top presentation. Right. And, it's, and if you see, as you know, you don't actually, I don't actually do this sort of thing every in everyday life. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And we all put on our own sort of. So it's a different voice or different personalities when we get behind the microphone. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Well, look, I'm going to play some music now, yeah. just, just to keep the listeners on the, on the tune to this. Uh, what I, should, I should mention the station. It is Phonic <laughs> FM, uh, which is www.phonic.fm, and you can email us on studio at phonic.fm. And um, this, this next one is... is um, uh, an Australian s a s song now. Um, this is a band called Men at Work. Yeah, so that was a, a land, a land down under, men at work. So, JD, I'm going to play one one more clip now. Yeah. So we're sort we're sort of going towards this idea of 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 uh, a YouTube. Y YouTube don't have sort of continuity announcers, do they? But they must have some some method of linking things. Are you going to be it? Well, we'll we'll you do a lot of uh, YouTube. I thought you could do. Well, the, I'm just <laughs> thinking about how that how that would work. Right. But we can take clips. We can take. Um, well, we, we, we've done a half-hour sample of a one-hour program, mm -hmm. which is quite a large sample. Yeah. 
And now we're taking three or four minutes out of a podcast. Right. A couple. This will be the second one. Right. So if we if we sort of build to build that, we can do radio programs based on. Well, the Melissa Everidge track that came off YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's 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 just various ways of doing it that um, make up a radio show or extend a radio show. Yes, I think yeah. is is possible. Yeah. I'll play. I'll play this. This next. This next track. This. This. This is some um, extra. This is Lu- Lucy Mon- Montgomery. Jason um, talked about the value of the creative industries in helping countries to transform their economies. What Li Wei Wei is on about in his book, and also um, the value to the economy of the production of new culture and innovation, really, rather than just um, sort of the protection of something which has been creative and it's an invention and we'll look after it and hold on to it and try and exploit it according to a really traditional copyright industry's value chain. So that was one of the things that Jason um, pointed out, that he didn't really agree with in Lee Wu Wei's book and I have to um, agree with Jason in that actually Lee Wu Wei has adopted what is a little bit surprising for me which is a really standard and uncritical view of the role of intellectual property in the creative economy. So really the definition of the creative industries that he's adopted when he talks about Um, intellectual property is a copyright industry's definition. So he sees the value chain in the creative industries where he sort of discusses the role of intellectual property as being um, creativity at this end and it's a value chain and then uh, we have some sort of industrial process and investment that adds value to that and actually if we have intellectual property to help us to protect our our creative invention or our creative work, then we can turn creativity into some sort of economic output. Um, Basically, I think that there can be no doubt that intellectual property is really valuable and obviously it allows for certain kinds of trades and certain kinds of firms to perform very well in a global economy. But actually, you know, it's a system that's under pressure, it's facing um, real challenges that have been brought about by new technologies. And the new technologies aren't just changing and disrupting old copyright industry business models, they're also creating huge opportunities for uh, distributed innovation and new ways of solving problems and working out creative solutions to the challenges that consumers are facing every day. And that's potentially very, very powerful economically and institutionally. So one of the um, examples we might talk about in the discussion is Shang Ren's work where he's looking at um, the academic publishing industry and processes by which scholars are thinking about how they can design better tools uh, which allow for peer referencing and new ways of using content and applying content to the work that they want to keep doing. And one of the biggest challenges for that process of distributed innovation where lots of people are thinking, oh, wouldn't it be good if we had a great new tool that could solve this particular problem, is that most of the content that they want to access is proprietary content. It's content that at the moment you have to pay a copyright owner for, you have to go through processes of gaining permission and all sorts of things which really um, turn innovators into pirates. And actually um, that has... (laughs) Yeah, that has really important consequences for processes of innovation across the economy and across the population. Um, So just to reiterate, um, I think Li Wu Wei's book is tremendously interesting and um, my point is that actually I think it's it's in relation to intellectual property and thinking about processes of innovation across the economy it's the beginning rather than the end 
of the story and I really um, look forward to reading more discussion and more debate around the role that intellectual property plays in China's really rapidly developing creative economy. So again, JT, I think we're going to have to think about that one and come come back to it. Yes, things to ponder over. <laughs> yes, but it, 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 it it's in, it's interesting to me the the comparison uh, with academic publishing and how music is at the moment because mm-hmm. I I guess that the the content of academic ideas is going to get more distributed as time goes on. And through different media, so there, w- there will be more podcasts, and there will be more on YouTube, so forth. Mm-hmm. And um, this distinction between copyright industries and creative industries—that's that's very interesting. Okay, well, that's a, another concept to go the road to go down, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because have you have you found that there's been a, a change in in music that what record companies or musicians will allow you to do with music over over the last five years? So oh, since the internet was born, uh, the music side of the internet. This is not the internet as a whole. Right. But you're allowed to do a lot more, you know, to gain access to things than you ever were before. You, you know, I've, in, in how you pay for it. Yeah. And how you obtain it, right? And how you're allowed to use it, right? And uh, so, it's, so it's much better now than it used to be, should we say, 20 years ago, right? And that fits with with what they're describing as a creative industry rather than a copyright industry. Yes, yeah, it's not a money sense thing, which is pretty good because that, and that's that was all it was. It was just a, a it was like Big Brother, <laughs> over looking over you, uh, over copyright and the rest of it. So now it's uh, a bit but the, easier. But the copyright, the copyright still exists. It's, it exists. There still are CD yes. sales. There still mm. is a, a download, a, yeah. you know, a legitimate download mm. business going on. Mm. So, you know, again, these distinctions aren't that mm. that clear. Yeah. Well, it isn't actually at the moment because the internet is is trying all sorts of things to control us again. This it's, is true. It, it's coming back again with you know how you download it, right, and where you go to get it, right. Because you can download something, and the track will cost you. Well, I don't know what track is. I've never down and never bought one off the internet before, but um, it will cost you that much. But you do do a search, and you you'll find a a download thing which is totally free. And it's possible. And it's possible in some way if you do a bit of research. There's somebody you know somebody's gone gone round the copyright for some. Fr- I don't know how they have. But there are out there. there are ways. There are ways of doing it. Not that I'm saying that you should do it. No. But I'm just saying there are ways because I've actually come across them. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, they do. They do exist. Mm. Yeah. But I think all these all these things are coexisting at the moment, and um, I, I I think academic publishing is is one area where there's going to be more debates coming along, and looking back at how music operates mm-hmm. is going to be quite relevant. Mm-hmm. In that in that situation, well, Judgy, I'm going I'm to start playing a bit more music now because okay. I think I think Chris will be here, but I've already gone about a quarter of an hour over over the time <laughs> I was okay. uh, so I was expecting. So, so where, where are we leaving this at the moment? Should we, well, should we leave it in a in a form of uh, continue next time? Or I, well, we might come back. There's, there's mm. one more thing I'd, I'd like to talk about, depend, depending on on time. But I think we should play some music now. But just a little bit more about design. Okay. Um, is because you'll see I put some some bits of paper on the four walls and the yes, ceiling. I've been, and the, I've been reading them, um, especially the one to my left. It's which which is the one that interests you? Uh, the one which says a big box which says sensibility. Sensibility. And that's definitely not me. That's not you. <laughs> so you're you're on the analytical side. You're more on the. Uh, there's a, there's the rational side. The rational side, sorry, okay, yes. Okay, so well, you have to explain what they are later well, on. Well, shall we play some music yes, and then, then we'll, we'll come back to we'll it? We'll do that, yeah. And um, what I'm going to play...